Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Going to be giving you my predictions for Manchester United's game against Middlesbrough in the FA Cup fourth round. So score prediction, I'm going to go with 3-0 to Manchester United and the goal scorers, I'm going to go with Marcus Rashford um, I think Rashford will get two. And the other goal scorer, I'm going to go with Jaden Sancho. So that is your predictions. Manchester United are coming into this game having won the last two games in a row. Before the international break, Manchester United beat West Ham 1-0 thanks to a very late goal from Marcus Rashford. And reflecting on the win against West Ham, that moved Manchester United into the top four. Manchester United progressed to the fourth round of the FA Cup by beating Middlesbrough, um, sorry, Aston Villa in the third round, 1-0. The last time Manchester United and Middlesbrough played each other was back in March 2017 when Middlesbrough were in the Premier League. I'd say the FA Cup is the only chance that Man United have got of winning a trophy this season. Yes, we're in the Champions League, but we're not going to win that. Manchester United have not won a trophy since 2017. That's nowhere near good enough to our standards. The last time Manchester United won the FA Cup, was back in 2016 under Louis van Gaal era. Man United have won the FA Cup 12 times. Middlesbrough, they progressed to the fourth round of the FA Cup by beating Mansfield in the third round. Middlesbrough are in the Championship, the Sifts in the Championship at the moment. Their manager is Chris Wilder. Middlesbrough appointed him in last year to replace Neil Warnock. Neil Warnock got sats last year from Middlesbrough. Chris Wilder has managed quite a few clubs in his managerial career. Uh, before Middlesbrough he managed Sheffield United. I remember when he was in the Premier League with Sheffield United. Before he managed Northampton. Uh, before he's managed Oxford. A while ago he managed Halifax and Alfred Town. So they're the clubs he's managed so far in his managerial career. Um, I do know quite a few of the players Middlesbrough have got, like I mentioned on the preview. Uh, they've got Aaron Connolly. He's on loan at Middlesbrough from Brighton. They have Andras Spora. Um, he's on loan at Middlesbrough from Sporting Lisbon. They've got Balogun. Uh, they also have Josh Coburn. They've got Isaiah Jones. Uh, they have Sammy Amiobi. Um, he's a former Newcastle player. They've got Duncan Watmore. Uh, they've got Johnny Housen. They also have Riley McGree. They've got Neil Taylor, Matt Crooks, Paddy McNair. 
Paddy McNair is a former Manchester United player. They've got Marcus Brown. Marcus Brown's just come back from injury not so long ago. They have Mark Bowler. He's out for the season with injury for Middlesbrough. They also got Connor Malley. So yeah, they are quite a few of the players they have got. But yeah, Manchester United should progress to the fifth round of the FA Cup. Uh, Paul Pogba, he's expected to return for this game because not so long ago Pogba returned to training. And the other week, Rangnick confirmed that Pogba would return after the international break. He was out with injury for a while. The last game Pogba played was a 2-2 draw against Atalanta. Don't forget, Pogba is willing to stay at Man United as long as Ralph Rangnick is manager for next season. Pogba has been impressed by Ralph Rangnick since his arrival and Pogba is open to signing a new contract. He's out of contract at Man United in the summer. Luke Shaw, obviously, he's been out with injury. He won't play in this game anyway uh, because Luke Shaw's not our first choice left back under Rangnick. Telez is our first choice left back under Rangnick. And Wan Basaka um, has missed the last few games because he's been out with COVID. I don't think he'll play in this game because he's not our first choice right back anymore. Diego Delo's our first choice right back. And I've been talking with you a lot about Mason Greenwood recently. Like I mentioned on my last video, Mason Greenwood has been released on bail after being arrested. Yesterday, Greenwood was further arrested on suspicion of sexual assault and making threats to kill. On Sunday, Greenwood was arrested on suspicion of rape and assault. As you all know, Man United have suspended Mason Greenwood until further notice. And yesterday, he was removed from FIFA 22. And obviously, a lot of United players are unfollowing Greenwood on social media. But it's disgusting what he's done. And yeah, you've got to say, Greenwood's career at Manchester United is over. His England career is also over. He's only the age of 20. Greenwood joined Manchester United at the age of 6. He made his senior debut for the club back in 2019. And since then, he's gone to make 129 appearances. And scored over 30 goals. Last season, he signed a new four-year contract. Um, Manchester United's next league game is Burnley on the 8th of February. Now, there's a good chance that Mauricio Potocino will be Manchester United's next manager. Because it's said recently that Potocino could be sacked by March. That's according to Telefoot. Uh, Potocino's job hinges on PSG getting to the next round of the Champions League. PSG play Real Madrid in the last 16 of the Champions League. More pressure's mounted on Potocino because PSG recently got knocked out of the French Cup by Nice. Potocino's been relentlessly linked with a permanent role at Man United. Potocino's been PSG's manager 
for over a year. I think he's won a French Cup with them and his contract at PSG expires next year. He is a good manager, even though he's hardly won anything. I think if he came to Man United, he would suit the strappings of the club and he would get the best out of these group of players. Revert back to when Man United sat Jose Mourinho. Man United should have got Potticino, but the club decided to go with Solskjaer instead. Potocino's proven in the Premier League as well, which is beneficial because before he endured a five and a half year managerial tenure at Tottenham. Back in 2018, he got them to their first ever Champions League final. And at one point, when he was Tottenham manager, he almost won the league. And before Tottenham, he managed Southampton. He got Southampton to their highest ever finish in the Premier League, but he only endured a short managerial tenure with them. So they're the clubs he's managed in the Premier League so far and before then he managed Espanyol. Uh, Merit Ten Hag, you know, he's been relentlessly linked with a permanent role at Man United. Revert back a few weeks ago, Rangnick said that he wanted Eric Ten Hag to become Manchester United's next permanent manager in the summer. I presume there's a lot of Man United fans that would like to see him get recommended in. You've got to admire the work Eric Ten Hag has done at Ajax. He's developed the young players well. He's won a couple of titles with them. Revert back to 2019. He got them to the Champions League semi-finals. He's been Ajax manager for five years. He got appointed in as the Ajax manager back in 2017. His contract at Ajax expires next year. Ajax is the fourth club he's managing in his managerial career. Before Ajax, he managed Utrecht. Before then, he managed by Munich's reserves, and before then, he managed go ahead Eagles. Um, Ralph Rangnick. He's Manchester United's interim manager until the end of the season. Then it did say he will continue in a consultancy role for a further two years. But revert back to the other week. He said Manchester United are considering offering Rangnick the job on a permanent basis after being impressed by Rangnick since he took charge in December. So, reflecting on that, he said, you know, Man United put the search for a new manager on hold. You know, Rangnick's been Man United's interim manager for, what, two months or nearly two months now. He's managed ten games so far in all competitions. He's lost just one game at the moment. He's had five wins from eight league games. And he's progressed Man United to the fourth round of the FA Cup. There's been good performances under Rangnick. There's been poor performances as well. Revert back to earlier on this season. It said Rangnick, you know, was losing the dressing room at Man United. And he mentioned that 17 Manchester United players were unhappy and wanted to leave. Don't forget Man United changed formation under Rangnick. Our new formation is the 4-3-3 formation. Before Man United, Rangnick was the head of sports and development at Locomotive Moscow. Uh, Rangnick has endured one transfer window, now as Man United's interim manager. And it was a very, very disappointing January transfer window. Because Manchester United didn't make any signings. And we wanted to sign a midfielder because when Rangnick first came in, Rangnick identified Manchester United's midfield as a weakness. Plus, Lingard and Henderson didn't leave in January. And they should have left in January, but Manchester United blocked their exits. Can't understand why, because Lingard and Henderson are deadwood. Because neither of them get in the team. 
And obviously towards the end of the January transfer window, uh, we had the Mason Greenwood incident. Uh, we did loan a, quite a few players out though in the January transfer window. You know, we loaned Donny van der Beek out to Everton. We loaned Ahmad Diallo out to Rangers. We loaned Marcial out to Sevilla. We loaned Tiedem Mengi out to Birmingham. We loaned Tuan Zerbi out to Napoli. And I think we also loaned Ethan Laird out. So Rangnick wasn't backed by the Glazers in January, but he was actually promised that he was going to be backed. And he got told that, you know, transfer funds were going to be available for him. Uh, Ed Woodward recently stepped down. That's good news from a Man United perspective because Woodward was one of the biggest issues at the club for a long time. It got announced back in April last year he was going to be leaving when that European Super League came into the equation. Uh, Woodward had 17 years at Manchester United. Uh, Richard Arnold replaced Ed Woodward as the new chief executive. To be honest, we don't really know much about Richard Arnold. The Glazers, you know, they're still at Man United. They've owned the club for around 16 and a half years. They bought Manchester United for 500 million back in 2005. Uh, revert back to April last year. United fans protested against the Glazers at the Carrington training ground and at Old Trafford because the Glazers were planned to scrap the Champions League for that European Super League. But in the end, the Glazers ended up apologising. Well, that's what Solskjaer did say at the time. Towards the end of last season, it said the Glazers were only willing to sell the club for, what, £4 billion. Manchester United have sacked four permanent managers since Ferguson retired. You know, we sacked Moyes, Van Gaal, Mourinho and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. And we're not even really known as a sacking football club. Because we haven't really got the structure in that to keep sacking managers. Uh, players will leave Manchester United in the summer. Like I've said, uh, Cavani will leave in the summer. Because we've heard back to earlier on this season, Ralph Rangnick revealed that Edison Cavani wants to stay at Man United till the end of the season. Cavani's out of contract at Man United in the summer. Man United got him on a free transfer from PSG back in the summer of 2020. Um, hearing that River Plate are considering a transfer for Edison Cavani in the summer to replace Julian Alvarez. Last year, Cavani was linked with Barcelona. Well, it actually said that Cavani agreed to join Barcelona on an 18-month contract. Last year he was linked with Juventus and he was linked with Boca Juniors. He rejected a move to Boca Juniors. Lingard will also leave in the summer. But like I said earlier, Ron should have left in January. Lingard's out of contract at Man United in the summer. He's been part of the club for a long time, but like I said, he doesn't get in the team. Matter, he'll also leave Manchester United in the summer. Um, his contract at Man United expires in the summer. Matter lost his place in the team a while ago, but he's had a good career at Manchester United. You know, Matt has made nearly 300 appearances in all competitions and he's scored 51 goals. And he's been at Manchester United for eight years, so reflecting on that, he's been a long serving player. Man United got. Juan Mata from Chelsea back in 2014 got him for 37.1 million. Back in 2020, he rejected an 18 million a year contract offered to play in Saudi Arabia. Matic, he'll also depart the club in the summer. 
He's out of contract at Man United in the summer. Matic isn't one of our first choice midfielders, but despite that, he still seems to get his opportunities. He's the only predominant centre defensive midfielder Man United have got. Manchester United got Matic from Chelsea, got him for 40 million. Matic has been a United player since 2017. Uh, like I say, if Rangnick's not Man United manager for next season, Pogba will leave in the summer. Uh, Jones will definitely leave in the summer. I thought he was going to leave in January, but he didn't. Uh, because Romano said on deadline day that Phil Jones rejected a loan move to Bordeaux. Uh, Man United and Bordeaux had actually reached an agreement for Phil Jones to go out on loan in order to get more playing time. And even reports from France said that Phil Jones' talks were at final stages. But Rangnick said he was happy for Phil Jones to stay. His contract at Man United expires next year. Jones, the last game he played was the 1-0 defeat to Wolves at Old Trafford. He was actually our best player in that game and it was his first Premier League appearance since January 2020. This season is, is his 11th season at Man United, so reflecting on that, he's been a long-serving player. He's the only outfield player that's still with us from the Ferguson era. Eric Bay, he'll leave as well in the summer. Um, Eric Bay doesn't really get in the team. Uh, Man United will look to get rid of Dean Henderson as well in the summer because Henderson doesn't get in goal much because revert back to last summer, the higher reclaim that number one spot back. Henderson's only made two appearances this season. Earlier on this season, Henderson was out with COVID for a while. And... Um, there's a good chance Ronaldo will leave Man United in the summer. Well, it said earlier on this season that Ronaldo will leave Man United in the summer if they fail to qualify for the Champions League and Ronaldo faces a 25% pay cut should Manchester United fail to qualify for the Champions League. Uh, the other week, reports from Spain said that Ronaldo could be heading back to Real Madrid before Ronaldo endured like nine and a half years at Real Madrid. That's before he went to Juventus. And Ronaldo's already asked his agent, George Mendes, to find him another club. Um, a couple of weeks ago, Ronaldo gave an interview and he was critical of the youngsters. So, reflecting on that, he's demanding more from the youngsters. And Ronaldo said Rangnick will do a good job at Man United and he also said, I'm not at Man United to compete for 6th or 7th. He said, finishing below 3rd is unacceptable. So, that's what he said. Ronaldo played against West Ham before the break. He did well, to be fair, but prior to the game, he was a doubt because Ronaldo picked up a neck injury, but obviously recovered from that neck injury. He's had a few injuries, Ronaldo, since he re-signed. Don't forget, he was furious after being substituted in the 3-1 win against Brentford, but Rangnick defended his decision to substitute Ronaldo against Brentford. You know, since Ronaldo re-signed, he's got 14 goals in all competitions. He's got over 800 goals in his career. And Man United re-signed him last summer for 20 million with add-ons included. He wears a number seven shirt and he's got a contract with Man United until 2023. There's an option of a further year. Ronaldo receives £480,000 a week. So he's the highest earner at Man United at the moment. And he's won over 30 trophies in his playing career, including five Ballon d'Ors. And 
Man United will look to sell Harry Maguire and Anwan Basaka in the summer. That's what reports from Spain said um, the other week. Maguire and Anwan Basaka are not good enough to represent the club. Uh, Manchester United, though, could lose up to 15 players to free contracts over the next 18 months. You know, because we've got, obviously, Rashford, who's out of contracts next year. We've got De Gea, that's out of contracts next year. You've got Delos, whose contract expires next year. Uh, Jones, his contract expires next year. You know, Matic is out of contract in the summer, so to his Paul Pogba. You know, Edison Cavani is out of contract in the summer, like I've mentioned, so to his Juan Mata. Lingard is as well. So there you go. So anyway, guys, that's everything to update you with. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribing as always. And take care. God bless. And I'll see you all again very, very soon.